Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equinox. In the last episode, we successfully created a happy, healthy ecosystem for our eagles. Now they're free to build their tiny little nests on the ground, and they're filled to the brim so far with all of these tiny little hatchlings. They've been doing much, much better here too than our previous attempt at raising eagles. I mean, you can just see all of the eagles we have soaring through the skies right now. It's probably a pretty terrifying sight for our guinea pigs, but so far it seems like they're surviving and thriving too. It looks like some of them have even found some pretty good hiding places. Maurice, I saw you poking around those blueberry bushes. Those are so big that they must make some very good hiding places indeed, as long as the sparrows aren't using them instead. Actually... Okay, our sparrows are over here. I wonder if maybe they've merged with the jungle? I saw one just fall out of the sky. That's a little bit worrying. I don't see their nests over here anymore. I wonder if maybe the blueberry bush they were using is withered away. Well, either way, it seems like the sparrows down in the jungle are doing just fine. And as far as our mushroom kingdom goes, they're doing pretty good too. No sparrows in the skies, but now we have tons and tons of flies. The intruders to our royal warthog's kingdom. We have flowers here now, though, and we should be able to evolve the carnivorous plant next, the fly trapper. All we need to do is grow one of these flowers a little bit closer to the flies, or perhaps take one of these flies in the sky right now and move them straight over to our castle instead. Then these flies will be the true intruders of the kingdom. We'll grab this one since it's a little bit more new, and I would imagine that our flies probably don't have too long of a lifespan anyways. So you go right here, and hopefully you'll be able to evade all of those toads. Oh my goodness. I just remembered we have some toads guarding the castle right behind it. Yeah, you're going to have to multiply rather quickly if you want this to work. Well, I guess we'll come back to him in a little while and see if he's managed to survive at all. I would like to see if we could finish evolving every last one of these swamp plants today. But we also have one last biome to build. The last one on our list entirely as far as we know, and the one that I always seem to forget about too. We still do have a couple of tasks in here that would help us along. So the desert is going to be our next big project. We need to create a desert biome in the world with at least three different types of cacti. And I know we unlocked this a very, very long time ago. So we need four small cacti, four prickly pears, and four yucca in the world. Let's see what we have access to right now. I know we have at least some of the cactus plants. Though, given how many plants we have in here, it might be a better idea for us to select the desert inside our menu. There we go, so we have the yucca plant available to us. And this is probably going to evolve all of the other cacti, right? So what does the yucca plant need in order to survive? It's a small spiky plant that grows in the desert. This is the most basic desert plant in Equilinox and is a good place to start when creating a desert biome. It needs an area below 50 meters, so maybe this valley will work. And it dislikes stones too. Alright, so that means we're going to have to be careful. It can't get too close to the mountain slopes, but I would imagine that a desert would have a pretty hard time thriving up there anyways. This might truly be the last remaining place that we can set up our desert. So many of the other areas in this world have been claimed already, leaving the desert with the shortest pickings. Ooh, hang on a second though. Another strange frog has been born? I think we actually had a frog mutation in the last episode too. Ooh, but this one looks very dark and mysterious. Do you perhaps have a little bit of the dark forest in you too? Interesting, so the dark forest magic has reached this area now. Not our typical shade of purple, but something a little bit more sinister. I'm pretty sure they are the exact same color as our tomato plants over here, too. And considering that these things are so far away, it's pretty surprising they managed to cross. Oh, are we... Oh, there they are. Okay, I thought we were out of these special colored plants. Well, maybe we want to selective breed a few of you, too, then. We certainly don't want to see these tomatoes disappear entirely. Now let's go back to our little desert area, and we'll see if maybe we can plant down a few of those yucca plants. I guess here should be fine. 
the altitude factor says good. It's not too close to those stones, so it should be happy. Yeah, we'll create our first little tiny desert ecosystem right between all of our mountains. Almost as if the mountains are sheltering them in a way. It'll be secluded for sure, almost as much as our bamboo forest. Which is probably all well and good because I can't imagine that this place is going to be too suitable for too many animals. Now do you think maybe our flies have finished spreading over in the swamps? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, talk about an invasion! Oh, this is like literally my nightmare. I am so sorry, my poor royal warthogs. There are flies in like every inch of free space here. Okay, we seriously need to get evolving the trapper plant. They're going to be our one force against the flies, I guess, because the toads aren't doing too good of a job. We'll use one of the ones that has a little bit more health. This one right here should do. And of course, there are plenty of flies here, so no trouble evolving that whatsoever. I hope it's going to be a quick one. It looks like it's relatively fast enough. So these flies should be goners in no time. Now what else did we have to evolve here? I think there were still a couple of types of trees. A oh, one type of tree, just the dead tree? Well that's awfully ominous. First we have swarms of flies and now all the trees are dying? Well this apparently comes from the slimy tree. We need a pretty thick swamp biome and warthogs and toads to evolve it. So does that mean we could just evolve one of these slimy trees back here? It all depends if the biome is thick enough, and to be honest, it's kind of on the cusp. Oh, but it says it's okay. It's a little bit expensive, especially for a dead tree, but we'll go ahead and evolve that too. And I guess our swampland is going to be officially done. It's actually spread pretty far since we've been gone. The Mushroom Kingdom is really coming around now. Maybe we need to place a few more subjects in here. A few more creatures to help in the war against the flies at least, because goodness knows these warthogs are going to need a little bit of help. Alright, well while those two are still evolving, let's see if the yucca plants have taken off. Excellent, it's looking better here already. Well how do we start evolving the other cactus plants, our small cactus and our prickly pear? The small cactus needs some rocks and stones. Alright, so we're going to want to make sure it's the right type so all of our yucca plants don't die off. And the prickly pear just needs a pretty big size. So let's go ahead and set the size trait of this one up by maybe about 25%. That should give us a pretty good starter. We haven't had any trouble with our trees so far, so maybe the wolves can spread a little bit of their influence down here too. Actually, speaking of the wolves... How's our little bluebell pack doing? Oh, look at that bright blue fur. Oh my goodness. They stand out so nicely against the snow now. And how do we actually have a little hopping goat right behind your territory? Billy the goat? Well, you were a little bit luckier than your friend, it seems. But these goats are getting mighty, mighty brave. Just dancing around the wolves like this. I mean, at least it offers you guys up some pretty easy meals. We have Samson, Jingles, well that's a perfect name for somebody in the Bluebell pack. Grace and Earl the youngest. Well, I have a feeling that you're going to have a pretty good time here. It seems like your parents are feeding you well. Now here's our fly trapper. This disgusting plant is able to snatch up insects and consume them. It prefers to live in the darkest, murkiest swamp areas surrounded by dead trees, mushrooms, and lots of juicy insects. Alright, so it sounds like it's a good thing that we have our dead tree evolving. But it also looks like it may have unfortunately stopped. Yeah, that's because the swamp biome is a little bit too weak over here. So maybe all we need to do is place a little bit more swamp grass right in the back. There we go, and it's already working again. Oh, and I just realized... I clicked Spreads the Swamp Biome. We actually want things that can live in the Swamp Biome, so maybe that's why we don't have all of the trees that I remember before. Yeah, the Pagoda tree was the other one, and I think we actually need to grow some sunflowers for that, so we'll get to that one in just a moment. First, let's see if we can find a good place to put down our first fly trapper, and I'm hoping that's going to be right around the castle itself. It's not super happy here, but that's probably because we don't have any dead trees, right? 
We need mushrooms, the dead trees, and insects. Ooh, maybe that will be a little bit trickier then. We may have to place them over here because I know the flowers don't like the mushrooms. I suppose we could always move the flowers somewhere else for the time being. Maybe the toads along the outskirts could take care of them instead? And we'll leave all of the fly traps to the castle itself because we need to make sure that all of these flies are dealt with for the warthogs. I wonder if we'll be able to see this thing at work. It looks like it's getting pretty big now. Do you think it's fully grown? The growth is at about 90%, so I would imagine it could actually grab one of these flies at any moment. Oh, there we go. Was that actually the fly trapper? It looks like it has a little tongue in there, almost like the toads and the frogs. Well, it must be learning from our little hopping soldiers. Let's see if we can see that again. If we can zoom in this way with the sky in the background. Yes, there we go. It was actually the fly trapper. All right, so it looks like you are certainly getting your fill of flies. The fly army is going to be history soon. Oh, but the slimy tree just keeps going back and forth between red and blue. You know what? Let's go ahead and place a couple of these red mushrooms down. I know the flowers aren't going to be too happy, but at least it'll keep our little fly trapper alive. And it should help make this ground a bit more fertile, too. Oh no, this tree is going to end up passing away before it even finishes evolving for us. We might actually have to switch over to this one instead. It's at 75% too. It is so, so close. Is there anything else that would actually spread it faster? We have the willow trees. Those swamp flowers, of course. Let's try the willow trees, I guess. I mean, it seems like we have so many over here. But maybe we just need one more to seal the deal. We might as well place a couple of the willow trees down by the water, too. Kind of to shade this area a little bit more. Give our warthogs some proper shelter to relax in. I mean, I've got to say, the flies have definitely decreased in size. As the one little fly trapper has been enough to pretty much destroy like half of the army over here. Most of the bugs that I can see are the butterflies now. So it's a bit of a lighter atmosphere already. Oh, are we actually going to get it? Oh, it is so, so close. Let's fast forward the time a little bit. Just one more. Oh no, it must be at like 99%. 97. Oh, and the problem is actually that we don't have warthogs around here? Oh, has it that been our problem all along? Alright. Maybe we need to scoot one of the warthog groups a little bit closer. The thing is that that's going to separate the groups if we're not careful. And I'm not sure if the swamp can sustain two groups of royal warthogs right now. Not unless we moved one way down here or something, but we would definitely have to give them a different sort of color. There's our dead tree. To be honest, it doesn't look super dead like that. It looks like it has some life left in it. How is it growing? No one knows. But what we do know is that this slimy tree grows in the swamp biome. This is one of the slowest growing trees in the game, but it has a lot of branches for birds to perch on. Oh, interesting. So could we actually bring some of the birds over here too? I'm not actually sure if the birds would even enjoy the swampland though. We'll have to take a quick peek into the sparrows, I guess. But for the most part, I'd imagine this is just going to be decoration. So it doesn't like large stones, but it does like mushrooms. I guess that means we should probably place you way over here. Not too close to the castle, but right in the middle of this giant field of mushrooms. So if it's going to be super, super slow growing, we probably have a very long time to wait before this thing is going to look any different. So let's go back to the desert. We never did start evolving the yucca plants, did we? Ooh, but it looks like we have tons of really big leaves now. I'll bet that any of these would work. Oh, you know, it actually doesn't look like it's going to be big enough. Gosh, and they look massive too. What are we at for a size? Wait, those are just normal? Oh, did we not spread in time? I wonder if maybe it passed away before it was able to spread far enough. Well, let's go ahead and try again, I guess. And in the meantime, we can work on the other cactus instead. All that's going to require is some type of rock or stone. 
so the yucca plant does not like stones. Those are the smaller ones, which means we can take one of the larger rocks right here and just place it down and it should be happy. I guess we could go ahead and place a few stones right in this dip. Maybe that'll be fine. I don't want to go too crazy because if some of the other plant life doesn't like stones, then we're going to be in trouble. We've already met the same fate up here in the mountains. So let's see if we can set this one up to evolve into the small cactus. Excellent, our very first cactus in the world. I'd imagine that's probably going to finish evolving pretty quickly too. So in the meantime, Let's check up on some of our other biomes. We haven't even touched a base with the lush biome today. Oh, and look at all of these blueberry bushes taking off over here. Sheltering the peacocks, even. Seems like you guys have plenty of food to eat. These two are fighting over the territory, too. Lucky and Buck, when it looks like the third one has just grown up as well. Sarge the peacock. Some very, very strong names for the peacocks up in the lush hills. Something tells me that they're probably running the entire show here anyways. The sheep are much more unassuming, so they're probably just going with the flow. Oh, and I think it just said that we can actually collect the reward for the It's a Trap task. So this was actually for having the fly trapper catch 40 different flies. It looks like it's a repeatable one too, so we'll be seeing that pop up in the corner quite a bit. Oh, and there's our small cactus already. I was just getting ready to figure out how we were going to start evolving the sunflower, but I guess the cactus is a little bit more important. A small, spiky balm. This cactus needs to grow in a desert biome and prefers rocky areas. The center of this cactus is filled with delightfully fresh water, which provides nutrients for small desert mammals. Yeah, since we're so far away from the water right now, as most deserts tend to be, they're going to need something to keep them sustained. And the cactus plant is actually a great provider for a lot of different types of animals. Oh my gosh. A bee has caught a disease? Oh my goodness, you poor little thing. Wait a second. Due to the poor quality of its habitat? Little bee, what kind of hive are you from? Oh, where is he going to decide to go? I'm curious if he's going to like spread it to everybody else. He lives in this hive over here. Well, it's clear that the bees should stay out of the hills, I guess. Oh, you poor little thing. I guess this means we're finally going to have to put our lizard's healing fruits to good use. Let's see if we can pluck one of these things from the ground. The witchwood fruit. If we could transplant this over to the hills, I wonder if the bee will actually like take a little taste of it. There it is. Let's put it right next to the hive. Are you going for it already? Oh no, but it's spreading. Oh my gosh, all of our bees are going to end up dying off. Wait a second, my little lizards. We're going to have to grab another one of these witchwood fruits and place it over here by the hive again. One fruit is only good for one creature. Oh no, I don't see the bee anymore. Where did you go, little one? I wonder if it passed away already. Well, we'll leave this witchwood fruit right next to it. It doesn't look like it has any sort of health meter. So just because we move this fruit away from its habitat doesn't mean that it's going to wither any faster. And that's all well and good too because we need these medicines to stick around long enough to actually save our poor little bees. Yeah, something tells me that bee must have actually passed away. I am not very happy about that though. Our bees are apparently very, very angry up here. They don't have what they need, it sounds like. Or maybe they're disease resistance. No, the bees is actually pretty high. Why well, didn't even realize that we could change all of this information on the bees? Wait a second. We could change them to red, dark purple, pink. Ooh, maybe we should give these bees a special color. I mean, since they want to live way up here in our fall forest, maybe we should give them a color to represent that. We'll definitely have to make sure that we place a few more flowers up here, though. I wonder if maybe... Oh my gosh, no. Now the ducks? Oh my gosh, Calvin. I don't think we're going to be able to save him in time. Oh no. Wait a second, what's wrong with the ducks over here? I mean, they've been so happy up until now. 
Sometimes it's hard for them to find food, granted. Oh my gosh, do you think maybe the bears are poisoning the honey? Like, they're tired of all this competition over here and they want them out. Well, at least we have one more duck. Oh, but the environment is so, so low. What are we doing wrong? It likes trees and it likes water plants. It prefers grasslands, forests, riverbeds, swamp, lush biomes, and the woodland, of course. And I think that's the strongest over here. So it shouldn't really be the biome that's causing it trouble, but its health is going down so, so fast. We have trees. Maybe we just need some stronger water plants. Let's try that. Let's see what we can do. It looks like most of the water lilies have actually gone off in a different direction anyways. So let's try placing some of them over here. There's a tiny area where they seem to be happy. So clearly we're missing something from their preferred ecosystem too. Oh, it's just the fish? Hmm, interesting. We haven't exactly focused on our fish in a very, very long time. It's so fascinating how all of these different creatures are connected, even in Equilinox. If one creature is struggling, if one specific type of plant is struggling even, then everything else starts to unravel. But are our ducks still okay, or did we lose every last one of them too? And we have another little baby duck down here. That's Jazz, that's Buzzy. Buzzy the duck, lurking right around those tainted honey hives. You be careful, little one. I'm not sure what's going on out here to make you so unhappy. But one thing's for sure, we are going to have to seriously remodel this place. I guess let's start by building some of those little sunflowers. I think we are going to use these poppies over here. And I'm pretty sure that all we need to do is change the color over to yellow. And to make them pretty big too, of course. So let's go ahead and increase the size tray all the way up to 30 for this one, I guess. It's pretty expensive, but we want to make sure that this definitely works. And then we'll go ahead and change it over to yellow, too. So pretty soon, you should see some nice big yellow poppies popping up all around you, Buzz. Maybe that'll help you feel a little bit more at home. So far, the sickness seems to have stabilized, though. So I think we're going to be okay. But I'm wondering if maybe we should bring one of the medic teams out here. A little group of lizards to slither underneath these big rocks just to observe so they can take back the news to the medics over in the jungles. Yeah, let's go ahead and see if the lizards would like to live anywhere nearby. Well, I think that's a pretty resounding no. Lizards do not like the woodland biome, okay. Would their little frogs like it any better? Yeah, seems like they would be suited to this place. So maybe since they don't like the woodland areas, they could send the frogs out for them instead. I guess it makes sense. The lizards can't possibly cover every portion of the world. So they're going to need a little bit of help here and there. Oh, I would say help from these absolutely terrifying purple frogs. Oh my gosh, and they jump so high too. Do you have like extra bounce power on you or something? Well, it does seem pretty darn high. And I like to see that the disease resistance is pretty high as well. I don't know, maybe we could actually take one of these frogs over there. I suppose it would fit in a strange sort of way. While it isn't technically the dark forest, it is still a woodland biome. So let's go ahead and transplant you, and we'll bring you all the way over to the other side of the world. I think the only other thing we're going to have to do is make sure that we place down some butterflies or something. He's definitely going to need something to keep him sustained. So let's get a few groups of butterflies fluttering around here too. And that should have you feeling a little bit happier. I guess the only other thing we're missing are probably the mushrooms for the frogs. So if we could change this over to no requirement again. Let's just go ahead and place a couple of these button mushrooms right around its home. Alright, so you're going to act as the eyes for all of our medics over in the jungle. Hopefully you can figure out exactly what's going wrong over here. I'm sure they'll let us know once our sunflowers are ready to evolve too. And hopefully in the next episode we can turn this into a bit of a healthier biome. Because clearly something is very, very wrong right now. And once again, we've gotten completely distracted from our poor desert biome. We didn't even place our first cactus down officially. At least it's a start though. We know that a desert is slowly but surely taking form right in the middle of all of our mountains. 
so next time we can give it a little bit more love. And speaking of which, before we end the episode, let's go back to the Swamplands. Yes, it looks like that dead tree is completely grown now. 100% growth. I know we were distracted, but honestly, it didn't seem like that took that long. And the dead tree does add its own sort of charm to the Swamplands, though I can't imagine it would look very appealing anywhere else. This seems like it would make a pretty good home base for a new type of animal, though. So maybe in the next episode, we'll have to see if we can increase the population in our Mushroom Kingdom, too. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!